Today our discussion is about quality consideration and benchmarking and that is Unit 17, Responsibility, Accounting and other topics related that is transfer pricing and uh, this is Unit 18. Broadly we are going to discuss what is quality, uh, what, what is the definition of quality, what is ISO, what is the cost of quality to the company, measure of quality and tools for the quality analysis, benchmarking, total quality management, ISO, responsibility, accounting, allocation of common cost, transfer pricing, theory of constraint, performance measurement and the balance scorecard, and project management. Broadly, these uh, topics are very in depth in nature. For example, if we talk about total quality management, that is a complete set of uh, subject. Then project management is again a deep uh, uh, sort of discussion we can do. But we have to confine ourselves for the C CPA slavers. So I will try to be in, in the defined parameters. Now, <clears throat> typically quality was not an issue. 50 years before, 60 years before, you just want to make and sell. And if people feel that goods are okay, so they use it. But gradually, as the customer expectations were increasing and they were more focusing in terms of zero defects and they want things to be similar to each other, it's not that one product is okay, other product is not working fine. So that was not a quality concept for them. So gradually the quality came in the operations, procedure, production and overall in all the organization. So in today's lecture we are going to discuss what is quality, how it helps organizations and then we will relate it with total quality management that is the uh, the attempt to reduce the cost and increase operational efficiency in the business uh, mechanism. Then we have to link it with the ISO, which are now everyone needs ISO certification and they believe that if you are ISO certified, so your company is a standard company to, to be deal with the others. Benchmarking is when you compare yourself with the best practices. It may be your competitor, but it's not necessary that it should be your competitor. You can compare yourself to improve. If your standard is high and you are targeting to that standard, so means you will try to bring improvement in your procedure. For example, if a young guy, he idolized Tom Cruise. So this is the benchmark. Tom Cruise is a benchmark and he will now start thinking in a way, behaving, talking, hairstyling, coloring, his dressing, where well, gradually one day he will look like a Tom Same way, if you will develop yourself, same way if you want to develop yourself as a big company, big practice, and good governance, corporate governance, you want to bring efficiency in your business procedures, you have to make a benchmark to follow. Because this benchmark is, if it is better than you, then surely you will reach to that place where you will. And if that benchmark is also a, having a benchmark, so it's a gradual improvement in your business mechanism. Because you cannot claim yourself uh, that you are now achieving what you want and this is the data. Once you reach to a next stage, then a next stage challenge is very good. That's why those candidates who do CMA, then they feel they should do CPA. After CPA they feel they should, for continuous professional development they should do this, they should do this. So the benchmark keeps changing. But once you reach to a higher stage, surely the benchmark will come to a next stage. Because that's why he's your benchmark, because he knows to set the benchmark to go and make a trend for the best practices. So benchmarking is a, is a technique for the companies to, for improvement, to bring efficiency in their business operations by having 
uh, standard for best practices. Then we have uh, the total quality management, which is to bring quality in all aspects of the business operations. And if you bring uh, quality and value in engineering in the business process, you will feel that your cost is, is reducing. So it's ultimately going to hit your cost and you will achieve the highest level of cost efficiency, which is surely going to generate a high profitability for you. And the best value for the product design, research and development in terms of all operations. After this, we are going to discuss responsibility accounting. What is responsibility accounting is, before, when there was a concept of kingdom or centralized uh, the empowerment, uh, power, the all decision making was with one guy. And all the rest are following it. This was the trend. But once the world realized that uh, decision making will be more supportive if you involve the people, different minds, take their feedbacks, and give due consideration to the opinions. So you have to, for giving that, you have to depower uh, your uh, authorities. You have to give, you have to empower the employees for taking decisions. So if they know their parameters in which they have to work, and they know what is their domain of operations, and within that domain they can take the decisions so his domain will be more efficient and effective. <coughs> because board and the senior management is not into day-to-day -day operations. <coughs> Generally the <coughs> middle management is into day-to-day -day operations. So if you want to bring efficiency in operations, the best approach is always to involve people in the decision making process, give them empowerment, give them right to decide for the given circumstances. But this is not a general rule, it may be applicable to the good uh, environment where people are more educated, they know when you give them power they understand the responsibility also. But if they are not educated enough, they cannot take decisions, in that case you cannot give the empowerment. And you have to see the person who are you going to give powers, delegate authorities, should be capable enough to perform his roles. Now, uh, we have a CEO for the company, <coughs> the company has different units, and for a single C CEO it's not possible that to take all the decisions. So, it's now the need, it was a need of time that they should delegate their uh, responsibilities to the general managers, managers, assistant managers. This gives a concept of responsibility. What you do is you make profit center, you make responsibility center, you make a department and you say, okay, you are responsible for you. Sometimes you say you are responsible for your cause, sometimes you are, you are uh, giving them a direction that you are responsible for income and cost. So it means you are making them profit set. Sometimes you are only making them responsible for income, this is income center. And sometimes you give them income expense, means profit, plus whatever investment took place to build their department also for the equity, so that it will be an investment center. These are called SPUs, strategic business units. Generally, in every small organization, big organizations, uh, when, uh, whether they are, they are F, FMCGs or they are banks, they are working on this concept of SPUs. They have their business units, which is traditionally being called as departments. But now the department has been upgraded <coughs> with certain roles, certain expectations to the management. Because management is the process of planning, organizing, implementing, designing and evaluation. So if one guy is planning finance, marketing, sales, production, that is not going to bring efficiency. Efficiency will bring when the related skilled, experienced person is going to develop his own strategic 
provision of the department and the directions and the procedures of the company and which is supplemented to the organizational overall 